He is on your right. Evan Kyle is on your left. It's Death Shadow against Obzon Company. These players will be given the green light here in just a moment, and we will start round number one of modern action in just a moment. This should be an informative match right here, because if you had to think of, of decks that should fundamentally have a good matchup against Death Shadow, it should be a deck like Obzon Company, a deck that can threaten its own very fast kills, a deck that can get to the battlefield very fast. It's not like this Death Shadow deck is really great against chump blocking. And part of the reason you see Liliana the Last Hope is that Lingering Souls is a real vulnerability for this list. It's de-emphasized uh, the, the Teamer Battle Rage. It doesn't have a whole lot of effects that Grand Trample. And if you were, if you didn't want to play Death Shadow this weekend, and you wanted to play something that should be good against Death Shadow, Obzon Company would be on my short list of recommendations. So I'm interested to see how this match plays out. Obzon Company, a deck that did make the top eight of Grand Prix Vancouver last weekend in the hands of Eric Severson, a member of Team Mash Drop. So congratulations to him. As we head over to Jerry Thompson after Evan does play a copy of Bird's Paradise. He's down to 17 as Evan because of a fetch for a Temple Garden. Get used to that being the life total to open things up as Thompson falls down to 18. I think we can get used to Street Wraith being cycled this weekend yep. too. This is how, when Richard Garfield imagined magic, this is what he thought of. Is that, yes. As just putting cards in your graveyard and taking damage for no effect. <laughs> Thompson down to 16 now. <laughs> Let's make it 15. Probably 13. Probably 13 in a moment. And Hey, why not? How's the 11 sound? This looks right. Yeah. <laughs> this looks how the game was intended. There's an overgrown tomb. Jerry down to 11 on the first turn of the game. You've got a Kitchen Finks, a Spike Feeder, a Forest, a Godless Shrine, and a Birds of Paradise. So not the most threatening hand here from Evan Kyle. But it is some amount of a clock and some amount of chump blocking. But as far as hands that Thompson can see, uh, this is on the less powerful side. I would imagine Finks is just the best brawler here, the most impactful card, and will be selected over the feeder. Jerry will take a long look at it, figure out what he does want to select. But you have to imagine if Jerry's hand is any good, keep in mind he is on a mulligan of six, he's probably happy to see those cards staring back at him right now. Not the most threatening of hands. Yes, this deck can, go, can draw collective company, quarter calling, all that good stuff. But for right now, he's actually doing okay. It's only kind of bad news contextually because of the matchup. Not a hand you want to see, but soft on the, as far as those hands go. A spike feeder here for Evan Kyle. His draw for the turn was another cop was his own copy, excuse me, of Overgrown Tomb. So he's got two lands and a Bird's Paradise. He needs some action. Collected Company, probably the best draw he can have next turn. We'll see if he's able to find it as we head over to Thompson for his second turn of the game. And Thompson there with a big draw there with land number two. You can see a Tarmogoyf and a bunch of one mana spells in his hand. So getting the second land on this turn really opens up the efficiency of this hand. Decisions, decisions here for Thompson as he does scroll through his hand. Verdant Catacombs in the grip. You mentioned the Tarmogoyf. A couple discard spells over there as well. The goal of this deck, of course, is to get Death Shadow on the battlefield. It gets very large very quickly, kills the opponent very quickly. The deck is also very complicated to play. And the timing of things like Mistress Bobble and Street Wraith, managing your life total. This is not a simple deck to pick up, even though it just looks like Thompson is cycling a bunch of cards and... Casting discard spells and now a Tarmogoyf. Here is a Tarmogoyf. Blood Crip, the land that Thompson will search for. So he's already down to eight, and Tarmogoyf is a three four. One thing to know about this deck, as Kyle does draw a card, looks like it's a Renegade Rallier. But one thing to note about this build of Death Shadow, you have Bobble that you mentioned, Street Wraith, which puts a creature in the graveyard a high percent of the time. Plenty of fetch lands, of course. That's not going to be a problem for Tarmogoyf at all. But also Tarfire here as well. So these Tarmogoyfs, currently a 3-4, but easy to make into a 5-6. Yep. Tarfire here, a concession to a couple things. One is Tarmogoyf, and the other is Traverse the Uvenwald. Mm -hmm. Tarfire, a great enabler. Almost impossible to not have Delirium if you have a Tarfire early on in the game. Now, I talked to Josh Sarah Layton who won the Grand Prix, and he says he would not play Tarfire again in the list. Thompson playing three this weekend, I believe, so still some disagreement even among the players who had success about how the deck should be constructed. Looks like Burt's Paradise is going to get a counter from the old Spike Feeder, going to come across here for one point of damage, so starting to chip away here is Evan. Can't attack on the ground, got to race a little bit here. Uh, Kyle has to know he doesn't have all the time in the world. Traverse the Uvenwald, the draw here for Thompson. He's got three different types in the graveyard right now. A sorcery, a land, and a creature. So he's just one away from Delirium and making that into a demonic tutor for creatures only. Now this would be a great spot for Tarfire. Absolutely. On a number of fronts. Josh told me during the Grand Prix that he believes that he targeted himself with Tarfire more than anything else. I like that. 
<laughs> Gotta get a little frisky. Like that. Like that. See how Thompson does want to move forward on this particular turn. It's funny because every game that you play with this deck, you're you're more or less starting the game. This is a bit hyperbolic, but kind of at five life. If you're doing if you're doing what you're trying to do, yeah. yeah. So you've got to do this kind of juggling of man, I'm really trying to kill myself, but it helps me kill my opponent. So he's always under the gun. Is now here's a copy of Fatal Push, and now Traverse the Uvenwald is turned on, and I have to imagine we're going to see him go get a Death Shadow here. It's possible it's Gorklan Rampager, but he will go get Death Shadow. And now here comes Tarmogoyf into the red zone. There's a namesake of the deck. Single black mana for a 13-13. Death Shadow gets minus X, minus X, where X is your life total. So right now it'll get minus 7, minus 7. Not just merely a 1 mana 6-6. Six, six. A fine deal. <laughs> Evan Kyle will draw for the turn here. Again, he's on the hunt for Collected Company. And you can see why this deck plays one Gore Clan Rampager here as a bullet to find what Traverse the Ubenwald. Chump blocking is problematic for this list. And uh, Kyle can still potentially win this game by racing if he can find uh, opportunities to get in some chip shots or find a flying creature and just use random Birds of Paradise and such to chump the game out. Because this deck deals so much damage to itself, it doesn't take a whole lot of racing. Birds of Paradise and a Noble Hierarch. And a passing of the turn. Would have liked to see the Noble Hierarch pre-combat. Unless Kyle is trying to manage the Light Tolls in a very specific way, yeah, I would have liked to get the extra point in. Last card in hand for Evan is a copy of Renegade Rallier. So we head back over to Jerry Thompson. We know he's got a Death Shadow in his hand. And not a bad setup here for Kyle. As next turn, assuming everything goes right, he can move the counter from Spike Feeder onto the Birds of Paradise and attack for two with the, with the assistance of the Noble Hierarch trigger. And then Revolt's triggered. So he can go and play the Renegade Rally or get something back, maybe another bird, maybe another Chump Blocker. And if Thompson can't find a way to generate Trample, either with his one copy of Tier Battle Rage or his one Gore Clan Rampager, uh, Kyle might be able to steal this one. Yeah. Here comes Tarmogoyf. Looks like Noble Hierarch's going to jump in the way. That'll work just fine. Now, interesting decision here between blocking with Noble Hierarch or Birds of Paradise. Noble Hierarch provides Exalted, but Birds of Paradise is a flyer. So this is really painful. I, I liked the line that Kyle was going to take here because I think his plan was move the counter onto the bird, get the Noble Hierarch back with the Renegade Rallyer, sure. and he needs the bird to be eligible to attack this turn for that to make any sense. Now, the draw step here for Evan was a copy of Court of Calling. Magic he could court for three again. here, and now we have to take a long look through the deck list about what is Magic worth courting for. Jones. He does have a copy of Fiend Hunter in the list. Fiend Hunter is a very good one to find. Even Mind Sensor, a nice bullet. Eternal Witness, a nice bullet. You see the Spike Feeder because of that combination with Archangel of Thune. Can't court for that, of course. At least not right now. Ideally, you do something a little bit cheaper here, just because I think Kyle really wants to get the attack in this turn also. So if he's got a Haymaker for three, and maybe Fiend Hunter counts, and that's just what you do here, uh, you would like to do something, even something like Cord for one to get a Noble Hierarch and move the counter onto the bird and attack for two. That seems in range to me, too. A lot of good options here. Unsure right now. Yeah, cat's out of the bag now. Yeah, if you, if you go, <laughs> yeah. Tap the feeder, nah, never mind, go. Yep, if you do that, the cat is certainly out of the bag. Thompson's hand right now, a Thought Seize, an Inquisition of Kozilek, and a Street Wraith. And these resources, you know, Thompson really can't leverage here. All of them demand his life total. N none of them get through the chump blockers, and he's dead on the way back. It's possible he has to cycle Street Wraith and hope to find Gore Clan Rampager or a Traverse the Open Wall to go get it. But if he believes that Kyle has drawn Court of Calling, which his body language would suggest, Thompson knows he can go get Feed Hunter or some other removal spell for three, and that might not work. Jerry's going to lead out here with an Inquisition to Kozlek, which, which is going to force excuse me, Evan Kyle's hand. Yeah. So that's not, that's not a bad place to start. Because you'd much rather play it pre-combat as opposed to walking into Cord in combat. Right. You don't really know what this thing's going to cough up. And that Inquisition's not doing anything anyway. So you got to clarify the game state a little bit here for some action. I 
So will it be for two or will it be for three here for Evan Kyle? The risk here with doing it for three and getting a Fiend Hunter from Kyle's decision is if the last card in hand in Thompson's hand is a removal spell, he just dies. So I, you know, I, I think Kyle's probably considering, is there a two I can go get that's productive in this spot that allows me to leave a blocker up or do I just need to cord for Fiend Hunter and hope to fade the removal spell? Now, this is interesting. Cord for three with it on the stack, gain some life. Oh, this allows him to get a rallier. Mm -hmm. And then the rallier can get back a chump blocker. He has two copies of Renegade Rallier in his main deck. But perhaps he's still going to get the Fiend Hunter. So this is a bit interesting here. Well, the Fiend Hunter is very weird if you're going to go ahead and sack the Spike Feeder, because the Spike Feeder is, is enormously valuable as a chump blocker and a way to move the counter onto the Birds of Paradise. So if he's going to sacrifice, I have to imagine it's just getting back Renegade Rallier and rallying back a Noble Hierarch, most likely, maybe a bird. So Revolt Trigger, it is Noble Hierarch. And now Thompson's in this weird spot, too, because if he just attacks with both creatures, Kyle can probably just say, you know, I'll take most of it and then attack with Renegade Rallier plus Exalted Trigger, which would be four. Right. So here comes Death Shadow. 9-9. Nine, nine. Pre pretty big. And this is part of the trouble playing against the deck. It's just, it's really hard to play around everything. Yep. If Kyle knew the contents of Thompson's hand, I'm sure he could have locked up the game last turn. Uh, but he just doesn't. Renegade Rallier is going to block, it looks like. I like this block here uh, for a number of reasons. I think Kyle wants to keep the mana just because you never know what you're going to draw. And also, I want the Exalted to be able to start hitting with the bird. Big draw step here. Did not get a great look at it. He is tapping mana very quickly, though. It's a Viscerous here. Viscerous here is not bad here. Again, another, another, chump, chump another chump blocker. A little bit of value. Kyle's got some high leverage draws he might be able to scry into as well. So Thompson's going to fall down to three. He'll draw a card. Didn't get a great look. I believe it was Colagon's command. There are worse draws. Does he have any basics this week? He does. He has a swamp and a forest. Makes sense to have some basics. One, you, you want to preserve the life total. And uh, two, sometimes I think you would just want to be able, you want to have the option of being able to traverse for a land. And this deck plays a little bit deeper than previous builds of Death Shadow. You do have some three mana spells, like Colagon's command, like Liliana the Last Hope. So it makes sense to have some okay. basics. So if you get passed, you know, you get the mana from that. Here comes Death Shadow again. There's a chump block. The chump and scry here would line up with the line that Kyle took last turn. Yeah, the tough part here for Kyle now that I think about it, let's see if he leaves his card on top. He's going to. I think he might be discarding that card in a moment. And losing the bird. Yeah. But it, but it all depends on what the card on top is, because if it's collect a company or another instant, he can still play it. Right. But a lot of his deck is played at sorcery speed. Correct. And there's a lot of creatures he would leave on top of the library at this spot. So that Colgon's command was a huge draw. So we'll get a better look at what that top card here is once Evan Kyle goes to his turn. For now, Thompson's going to sacrifice a Wooded Foothills. He'll fall down to two. Get a basic forest and prepare to play a Colgon's Command, most likely in the draw step. So, yes, you see him saying, in your draw step, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to kill your bird and make you discard. Evan Kyle, what did you leave on top of your deck? Ooh. Eternal Witness is a huge hit. That would have been a, a huge draw there. Mm -hmm. Would have uh, gotten back a lot of chump blocking. And now uh, Kyle is in the abyss. Now we go over to Thompson. Thompson's going to be able to attack with both creatures here as he plays a copy of Verdant Catacombs. Noble Hierarch looks like it might be on chump blocking duty now. I'm checking for Murderous Red Cap. Some decks have moved away from this card. I don't see any. No Red Cap, it looks like. He still can draw a court of calling and just court into an, or excuse me, collect a company and just collect a company enough gas to hold off for at least one more turn. Yep. Bird of Paradise. That's a chump blocker for the Death Shadow, assuming Thompson doesn't draw a removal spell. And then Kyle's still trying to hold on here. Thompson will untap. He will draw. He's found a fatal push. That's timely. Kill that and kill you. Jerry Thompson going to win game number one here over Evan Kyle. Death Shadow up again over Amazon Company. And what you just watched there is what you're going to be watching a lot this weekend, which is Death Shadow 
kind of walking the tightrope every single game because that's how most of its games play out. You can also see that this deck is extremely complicated to play against. I think if Kyle could look at Thompson's hand, it would not have been hard for him to win that game. But he was chump blocking very early on out of respect for Teamer Battle Rage, Become a Man's getting burned out, what have you. Um, and now we're going up to, to game two with Thompson up one. Well, we are going to take a look here at the sideboards for both players as they will go into the tank and figure out what they do want to bring in. I'm going to start with Evan Kyle's side. He's got three Tide Hollow Sculler, two Voice of Resurgence, a Chad Castell favorite, mm -hmm. from what I understand. Two Path to Exile, and then a bunch of one ofs here in Sin Collector, Kwasali Pride Mage, Burrington Forge Tender, Frexian Revoker, Selfless Spirit, Orzov Pontiff, I lot of Rhetoric, and Abrupt Decay. A lot of these cards don't line up the best in the matchup. I think the one Abrupt Decay is very easy to bring in. A lot of these other cards, you know, the Burton Forge Tender, not really that sort of matchup. The Orzov Pontiff, not really that sort of matchup. The two Path to Exiles are nice here. I can see the Sin Collector coming in as well because Thompson plays with a lot of spells. But sideboard a little on the light side here for Kyle. For Jerry Thompson, three Fulminator Mage, three Surgical Extraction, two Ancient Grudge, two Collective Brutality, an Abrupt Decay of his own along with a Maelstrom Pulse, a Liliana the Last Hope, a Coast Lex Return, and hello. Hello, big game hunter. A big game hunter. Well, I like all the, the removal that's two for one or a lot of value against the one toughness threats. Um, you know, Kozilek's Return, Liliana, The Last Hope, I think are all very solid here. Uh, I like the two copies of Collective Brutality as well. For similar reasons, there's a lot of small creatures in Kyle's deck and also being able to tag one of the marquee spells, either Collective Company or Court of Calling, uh, really valuable for Thompson. Those are the options here for both players for game number two. We'll be watching that game here in just a moment. In the meantime, we are going to talk about the weekly sale that is taking place on StarCityGames.com right now. It does end at Monday. Excuse me, ends on Monday at 10.59 a.m., but you can get some cheap standard singles right now. Yeah, over at StarCityGames.com, there's a weekly sale. It happens every week. starts Monday, 11 o'clock Eastern time, so make sure to be checking back to the website at least once a week to see what's on sale. Right now, up to 50% off select standard singles. You see that Feldar Guardian right there? Yep. Might not be with us that much longer. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. It's not here. Uh, you know, speculating on banless policy has proven to be a fool's errand. That's, so a, that's true. It's in range. It's in range to get banned, but who knows? Who knows? Either way, StarCityGames.com. Check out the weekly sale. I have a new weekly sale for everybody on Monday at 11 a.m. East Coast time. Head back down to the feature match area. Learn a little bit more about the player on the right coming off of a top four finish at Grand Prix Vancouver. We saw him play in the Players' Championship last year as well. We've seen him do a lot here on the SCG Tour. I'm talking about Jerry Thompson, of course. 32 years old from Elk River, Minnesota. 22 open top eights, five open wins, seven invitational top eights with two wins as well. Jason Ford, a good friend of his, holds the rights to name his firstborn child. At one time, and this is true, because I've known Jerry for a long time, he had $20,000 underneath his bed in a shoebox. Where else would you keep it? I don't know. <laughs> and Joyce, starting trips to play Pokemon Go at 4 a.m. And with the new Pokemon Go update, he's been battling. We were in Vancouver last weekend at the Grand Prix, and after day one, he, you know, he started off day one 9-0, and, and he's like, we got we to gotta do some Pokemon Go before dinner. I, I'm not really up to date with what the, what the update is like. I have seen some photos. Uh, I think Jim Davis, a passionate Pokemon Go player, but not really in the loop anymore. Yeah, it's not really my thing, per mm -hmm. se, but those who are a big fan of Pokemon Go, very, very passionate about it. So Most things are not my thing. <laughs> it's true of most things. Well, we will take a moment here as these players do shuffle up to allow our wonderful people over at Ultimate Guard to show your product and take a quick moment of your time. Ultimate Guard's Undercover Sleeves will be available in April later this year, so keep an eye out for those as we get ready here for game number between, between Jerry Thompson and Evan Kyle. You've got Death Shadow on your right, Obzon Company on your left. I think two decks that are going to be pretty popular this weekend, Patrick. Well, uh, Obzon Company has a reputation as one of being one of the better decks in modern, especially if you're looking to play a longer, more interactive game. There's a lot of people who just don't want to be slamming on the turn three, super linear, not very interactive decks. So you get to play Magic. But also you have your own powerful stuff, your own combo kills rolled in. And uh, again, I, I think it would be easy to talk me into playing this deck as a response to Death Shadow Aggro, uh, as this deck is not the best against chump blocking or combo kills that can be 
put together very quickly, and Obzon Company has a lot of both. And this deck is looking to gain infinite life. Between Spike Feeder plus Archangel Thun, you got Malira, Kitchen Finks, and Viscerous here. We're going the infinite life route yep. in multiple different ways here as Evan Kyle. So I like what he's trying to do. A lot of decks can't beat infinite life right now. He's going to start by sacrificing a windswept teeth. He's down to 19. How low will he go? And given the removal suite in this deck, too, you know, you're looking at Tar Fire, Fatal Push, Abrupt Decay. It's ambitious, but this deck does not handle opposing five mana creatures very well that are big. So that could be a route here. Just getting to Archangel of Thune ahead of schedule, that might be good enough. It's a basic forest and a noble hierarch, so the acceleration is here. We head back over to Thompson. Looks like he's picked up a copy of Tarfire. What I like about Thompson's build of this deck is that he's got seven one-mana removal spells in his main deck, four Fatal Push and three Tarfire, so he's able to slow down mana accelerants quite easily. Well, a lot of this list power is this is the best zero and one-mana stuff you can do in the whole format. Mishra's Bobble will allow Thompson to take a look at Evan Kyle's next draw step. And I like that because it gives more information about whether or not he wants to cast Tarfire Inquisition of Kozilek this turn. Now Thompson will sacrifice a wooded foothills. For example, if there's a high quality three on top of the deck, you probably want to kill the Noble Hierarch and then tag the, the spell drawn next turn with the discard spell. He'll get Overgrown Tomb and he will go with the discard spell. So we'll take a look at Evan Kyle's hand here in just a moment. Overgrown Tomb. Temple Garden, Archangel of Thune, Kitchen Finks, and Court of Calling. And remember, Thompson knows the exact card on top of Evan's deck as well, so he's working with perfect information for this decision. I'm sure Thompson will write down the contents of Evan's hand here in just a moment, and we'll see exactly what Jerry does want to select. Again, Archangel of Thune, Court of Calling, Kitchen Finks, Overgrown Tomb and Temple Garden, the contents of Evan Kyle's hand right now. He'll have one less card here in just a moment. Looks like Thompson also brought in Surgical Extraction. Okay. If I saw his hand correctly. You know, take Quarter Caller. Also brought in the Kozilex Return. That does not surprise me. Yep. I like Kozilek's return from his deck quite a bit, actually. Thompson and I will draw a card there for Mishra's Bobble. Collect a company to draw here for Evan Kyle. Temple Garden on the battlefield untapped here for Evan. He'll fall down to 17. Kitchen Finks is here. Going back up to 19. And if you were on the other side of the table, you'd be conceding right now, probably. I'd be ready to let, I'd be ready to let this uh, one that's, go. That's probably it. Go game three. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fine. You win. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure anyone could possibly beat one of those. Right. That is like cheating. <laughs> Thompson's going to play a Blood Crypt untapped. It looks like he will fall down at 15. Is it time for a tar fire? Yes. Now traverse the Uvenwald with Delirium. Tar fire, a tribal instant. That's two types. Mishra's Bobble. That's an artifact. That's a third type. There's a land and a sorcery down there, too, so he has certainly got Delirium going. Here's Death Shadow. Razor Verge Thicket off the top of the deck. That's land number three. And we know Evan Kyle has land number four plus collective company in hand, so we might see the powerful instant here in just a moment. And Thompson knows about this as well uh, as he, with the Mistress Bobble, saw that collective company was the top card. You ever watch a deck in action and just in the first couple turns get the feeling of this is not okay? Yes. All weekend last weekend in Vancouver. You're when getting, I, you're when getting I this vibe, right? Yeah. The entire time that I watched Jerry, Josh Underlayton, Sam, Matt Severa all play this deck, I was just thinking, well, I'm playing the wrong deck this weekend. My, my theory on Modern uh, ever since the Splinter Twin banning has been find the best stuff they let you do for zero mana, find the best stuff they let you do for one mana, and that's probably the route to a very good deck. Yep. Whether that's Gataxian Probe, whether that's Mox Opal, whatever. Uh, this deck is really, it looks like it's, it's figured out that puzzle. What's the best stuff to do for zero mana? What's the best stuff to do for one mana? Thompson will cycle a Street Wraith. He's down at 10.
Verdant Catacombs going to bring him down to at least nine, maybe more. It's also just hard to play against, too. I mean, you can see Kyle last turn didn't seem entirely sure if he was supposed to attack with his Kitchen Finks. Now Thompson's down to seven. Traverse. Is it maybe just another Death Shadow? Or maybe a Gore Clan Rampager. Oh, another Death Shadow. Yeah. I thought he picked up a Death Shadow on his draw step, so I thought he might be going for a Trample effect for next turn. I just thought, you know, I'm going to play two six sixes, and your, uh, your, your, your collective company had better be darn good. That's what Thompson's saying here. Down to 17 here for Evan. Viscera, Seer, Archangel, the three the other cards in hand, but he's going to play a main face collective company right now. So we'll take a look at the top six. We can see if he'll be able to find two to take with him. Voice of Resurgence among the cards here. Another copy of Kitchen Finks as well. So he's got a couple options. I think a Spike Feeder there too. Yep. Some good cards here. A really solid sea of chump blockers. Yeah. But it's not clear if that's going to be good enough here. Looks like Evan might have a quick question here for a judge. Not sure. Looking for the Oracle Later text on something. I think I like the feeder plus Finks combination here. Feeder gets him halfway home with Archangel of Thune, which he already has in his hand. And the Kitchen Finks obviously going to do a great job of chump block. Yep. This is one of those spots where if I'm Kyle, I'm thinking, if this is wrong, then I... Well, then, you know, what I, what? then there's no being right. <laughs> right. Three mana here for Thompson. Jeez. Kozilek's return. Jeez. Oh, this is, a giant, this, is a giant, this is a giant baiting is what this is. This is a giant baiting. So I was going to gain four life. And now, with Kitchen Fink's persistent on the stack, got a surgical dose. Uh. <laughs> this, is a, this is a giant baiting. Uh, no. Archangel with Invisorous here. That, those are the leftover goodies. So I guess the line there is to... Just move the feeder counters onto the Finks if you know that you're supposed to play around Coastal, you know, surgical extraction there. Well, if he had mana open. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. 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 Doesn't even have mana. Right. Yep. Never mind. It's mana to move the counters, but it's free to remove free, to, gain yeah, to gain life. To gain life. Excuse yeah. me. Been a little while since I've lost to that card. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't imagine Spike Feeder wasn't fun for you to play against. Uh, damage on the stack? No. no. Oh, it's damage on the stack? Yeah. Nope. So then Kyle has just had his his plans destroyed. Yep. And now Death Shadows. Let's see. 13 minus 5. Quick check. That's 8. eight. Pl times 2. 16. You got it. All day. No coffee necessary for that. I guess he should have taken voice of reason. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. Whatever. What I do know is he's at 7 now. This deck is a hoot. A lot going on for zero and one yep. against five, the number five. All right, Abrupt Decay is a nice draw. Yep. This is, the Viserys here gives him a chump blocker. The Abrupt Decay gives him a removal spell. There's still some hope Archangel of Thune could make its way into this, but it's going to be very hard. I take it back. I have bad news. Uh, doesn't have enough black mana. You've, you've, you've found the bad news. Yep. Yes, you have found it. Sorry. Should have assumed this didn't work out somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Bloodstain Meyer here for Jerry. He has Collective Brutality and Inquisition of Kozlek. Going to start with Brutality. Going to go after Viscerous here. Yeah, even though this, the card in his hand doesn't do anything, I don't think he wants to drain here because he actually loses damage that way. Mm -hmm. Evan will sacrifice the Viscerous here to Scry. Here come Death Shadows, and that is going to do it. Jerry Thompson going to win this match here over Evan Kyle. Two games to zero. Death Shadow going to take care of Obzon Company. Top four in Vancouver for Jerry Thompson. Maybe another top eight here on the SCG Tour. That's a hell of a deck he's got over there, Patrick. And you can see Kyle right now running through the lines in his head, talking to Thompson about things that could happen. I think Kyle probably could have won at least game one, maybe not game two, but, but possibly if he could just know the contents of Thompson's hand. This deck